some two thousand years ago, silk, once uniquely produced in China, has traversed deserts and seas to the west. A vibrant trade passage took shape, transcending time and borders. The heritage of silk has survived and thrived along the ancient Silk Road. The central Chinese city of Xi'an, an ancient capital, is where the journey began. Shichuan, a county to the city's southwest, is known as the origin of the Silk Road. The gilded bronze silkworm unearthed here in 1984 testifies to the place's long history of sari culture. Two thousand years later. The ancient craft is kept alive. These silkworms are in their fifth stage and are close to maturity. At 6 a.m., silk farmers in Shichuan return from the mountains with the fresh mulberry leaves. It is like the first time the baby eats it clean, so that it does not get sick, and to prevent it from getting sick. It takes great effort and patience to care for the worms. Which, tiny as they are, have brought fortune and culture to generations of breeders in Shichuan. We Shichuan have the saying, "Yan yu" is, "Lan yang zhu, qin yang can." Twenty-eight days, get the money. So I remember, when I was born in our village, it was always family feeding. With tender care and patience, the caterpillars grow fast. In about a month. They begin to spin a cocoon. It's time for harvest. Around one kilometer of fine and robust fiber can be reeled from one cocoon. The natural shine of silk is unparalleled. Shichuan Xian's four staple products are mainly silk and paper. Silk and paper are mainly for washing clothes, Jiangsu and Zhejiang. Other products like silk can be used to make clothes and clothing for Japanese women. Japanese women are also very fond of silk and paper. Silk and paper are also very fond of silk and paper. Silk came from um, China to be printed in India uh, since the earliest times. They used to get silk traders who would come from China just carrying silk on their backs and sell house to house. The eastern state of Jharkhand is one of India's leading silk producers. Cocoons are collected from across the state to the capital city, Ranchi. Some are distributed to the mountainous village of Bagaya, where over 10,000 women earn their living through reeling. On average, one can reel about 100 to 150 grams of yarn per day. We have decentralized production. They do production uh, on their to their home. We give them uh, 600 rupees per kg. After reeling, the yarn is sent for weaving in the handlooms. Anand Mandel, a traditional weaver whose family has been in the business for 200 years, buys Chinese mulberry silk from traders across the country. ये जो प्रोडक्ट है, ये चीन से आता है, और हमारे यहाँ जो है, मेरे यहाँ जो भरनी जो है, वो खुद हम लोग तैयार करते हैं। तानी जो है, ये चीन से आता है, अब भरनी तैयार करते हैं अपना खुद से। इससे जो है हमारे यहाँ साड़ी बनता है सलवार साड़ी बनता है दुपट्टा बनता है और मतलब जो इससे जो आप बना सकते हैं चीन का जो चीन से जो भी आता है मतलब बहुत बहुत बढ़िया पे प्रोडक्ट है। With 16 looms, 40-year-old Sakitrandra Ram runs the largest weaving workshop in the village. Over 20 years of experience tells him that combining the silks of India and China. Is more productive and profitable. My work is on Bharatiya silk and China silk. But China silk is less than the package, which is less than the package. If you look at it better, China silk is better than the package. From the small village, soap fabrics are sent to other places around the country for dyeing and polishing before being crafted 
into Indian women's traditional garments, like saris, stoles, dupattas, salwars, and turbans. Silk brightens our wardrobe. In central Beijing's bustling Tianmen area, Zhou Chu Ming, a 70-year-old master tailor, is handicrafting Chinese qi pao using silk. This glossy piece of fabric is a satin brocade from South China. The century-old Reifuxiang store holds a wide range of high-quality silk, handpicked from across the country. Making a qi pao from silk is a lengthy and meticulous procedure. Measuring, sketching, edging, buckling, and embroidering. Each technique takes years or even decades of training to master. Now making this qipao, we 随着我们这个民族文化的自信和国潮风的一个兴起，更多的国际的友人非常喜欢瑞福祥的丝绸。The European passion for silk spurred the prosperity of the Silk Road. On this journey, however, silk was never just a commodity, but a carrier of culture and witness to history. Macclesfield. A small town in northwest England, it's seen by many as the western end of the Silk Road in Europe. Silk making and trade peaked here in the 18th century. Silk shaped the Mecca field in history and still defines it today. A new reality is being woven here. How can we use these threads to weave new things going forwards? We want it to be modern, so we want to reinvent new things. Adam Lee Textiles, a local silk printer, imports most of its raw silk from China's Zhejiang province. It works with Zhejiang to combine traditional screen printing and modern digital printing to produce luxury products. About 80% of, of what we buy is from China. So we know from the experience that we have that they manufacture the best quality silk in the world. The quality that we get is exceptional. Mecca Field's historical link with China via the old Silk Road continues to bond cultures and peoples. Manu Qian, who has made several trips to China, said he expects the Belt and Road Initiative to benefit Britain and China and all other countries along the route. Silk Road, Road is an important part of not only China and, and the UK, but all the countries in between as well. Um, so it's a, I see it as a huge opportunity for the UK and for China. This is something that really will benefit everybody. As silks intertwined, cultures converge. The Silk Road has trialed a path and bridged peoples in civilizations. With the Belt and Road, a new journey begins. <laughs>